Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the Living in Utah live question and answer session. I hold right here. I try to do it every Thursday night. And I actually just was running down the stairs. I was on a phone call and last minute, I'm actually probably a couple minutes late. Um, this is just an open forum. You're welcome to, we have a discussion on anything that you want. I'm a local real estate agent um, right here in the state of Utah. But if you've got questions about Utah, investing, um, the United States, sometimes people join us from all over the world. So, um, um, you know, questions about the United States, no problem. So um, the headline that I had tonight was interest rates rising. Some, some important information. But uh, in the state of Utah, it's been a great week. We've had temperatures in the lower 60s. It dropped down a little bit, a little bit of rain. Uh, nighttime, much needed rain. But uh, a couple people joining us tonight. Alex, hello. How are you doing? And 369, Mr. Mondo. Good evening. Hope everyone's having a great evening. I I had a, a quick statement to make. We're talking about interest rates. Not my real name. Hi, Mike. <laughs> that's that's a good good. Uh, not my real name. I like that one. Um, one one night I had um, as as I was going, somebody had the name of George Floyd. And I had to like look at it twice. <laughs> it was, it was, it was comical. And and uh, I saw it on my computer, and I was like, did, did I read that right? I had to grab my glasses. But you hear on the news, interest rates, okay? Mortgage rates. You hear on the news, okay? The Fed raised the rates. Mortgage rates are going up. Mortgage rates are going up. Well, technically, that statement is not true. That is technically false. But there is a little bit of truth to that. First of all, mortgage rates are not based off of the Fed rate. They are based off the 10-year treasury. That is how they determine the mortgage rates. For instance, um, a week ago, we were at roughly 5.1% percent on a 30-year mortgage. This week, we are 5.3%. And that's before the Fed met. That's because the 10-year treasury bumped up. So they bumped the interest rate up with that. If you're looking for a rough number, and this is just a rough number, I don't know the exact science that goes into the mortgage rates, but I usually, in my opinion, if, if I pull up the 10-year treasury, I usually figure two percentage points above. So if we're like 3.3, figure the mortgage rate's probably like 5.3. Gives me a good, like rough number. So on the news, when they say that the Fed has raised um, rates half a percent and mortgage rates are going up, it's really, in a sense, it's only half the truth. Now, I will give them some credit. Typically, you will find that the Fed rate and the Treasury, the 10-year Treasury rate, will pretty much, if they're both, they'll, they'll both climb and they'll both decrease, you know, in, in tandem, in a sense. Usually don't see the Treasury rate going way up and then the Fed rate going way down. So, but they usually follow each other. So, and what I mean by that is just because they raised it by half a percent, that doesn't mean that tomorrow, so we're say we're at 5.3% going into Wednesday morning, that does not mean that tomorrow you call the bank and they say our mortgage rate is 5.8% because it went up half a percent. Um, but it's it officially is tied to the 10-year treasury, so. I do enjoy statistics and, and facts and numbers like that, but 
Trust me, I do not wake up in the morning and look to see what the treasury rate is or the Fed discount rate or the mortgage rate. Um, I pretty much only care, you know, if somebody's when there's someone's purchasing a home or something, then I dig into it a little bit, see where we're at. But uh, I don't geek out on those numbers every day. Now, certain stocks they do, or if you're trading um, British pound, U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, U.S. dollar, I know those rates. So I trade those. Um, but uh, so that that's the truth on interest rates. Hello, Frank. Hello, Evan. So Fed has mentioned only half point raise. That's correct. The Fed has also um, come out and said that they anticipate more rate increases throughout the year. I personally, in, no, no one can predict, predict the future. So, but I, I do anticipate the Fed raising more. Um, this inflation, they're trying to get a hold of the inflation. And right now, inflation is just like a runaway, runaway train. It's just, or snowball, picking up more snow, going down the hill. It, it's, it's everywhere. Inflation is pretty much everywhere. So I've got a question for people to put in the comments. If you know of an item or a product that has not been increased, I'd like to know about it. Because everywhere that I turn, everything that I buy on a daily basis, uh, even items I don't buy on a daily basis, I've noticed the increases. So everywhere. But um, so I, I think they're going to have to step in. Personally, I, I thought they needed to raise the rate um, last year to uh, control it. Of course, I said many nights, Thursday evenings here. You know, I said the inflation was going and the government come out and said, no, no, it's transitory. That was their favorite line. It's transitory. I still haven't figured that one out, but um, I think they got behind it a little bit. So I think they got a little bit of catching up to do. That's just my, um, not an expert by any means in that area, but uh, uh, do you suspect they will go even higher? Yes, I do think mortgage rates will increase. I think we're going to see some increases. And I'm sure a lot of people like to know how high. That's impossible to predict. There's a couple things that, um, you know, there, there's a couple, there's a lot of unknowns right now in our country right now. So how are we going to control inflation? Are we going to World War III? Um uh, are we going to be attacked on our soil? The possibility of going into a recession. So there, there's a lot of unknowns that have to be figured out the rest of this year. And some of those items are not in our control. I mean, really look around the world at what's going on. That's sad time. Oh, our basement was just completed, adding three beds and a bath. Redfin shows us uh, this is about a 300K additional value, giving us an 800K estimate on a 3,200 square foot home in Clinton. Sound about right. Uh, I personally think a 300K bump is probably high, probably high. Um, let me tell you, let, let me just, let, let me just go on, on another tangent a little bit and talk about Zillow and Redfin. And I'm, and, and this is exclusively for Utah. We are a non-disclosure state. What they mean by that is they do not disclose sale prices. Sale prices are not available to the general public. And so we're a non-disclosure state. With that in mind, companies like Zillow and Redfin do not have, let's say, the most possibly, I'm not too sure how they collect their data with us being a non-disclosure state, but they do not have uh, 
all the information on the exact sold prices of every home that is sold. So they have to use algorithms and math equations to come up with estimates on homes, um, you know, additions on basements, et cetera, et cetera. So sometimes those numbers, and I found those numbers, quite honestly, sometimes can be high, can be low, can be all over the map. So use it possibly as a rough guide. Basement costs us 100K cash. Good investment, I think. Well, you know, um, initially, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say yes about that on the basement. But to me, it's more if you need, um, you know, what usage will you get out of it? So, for instance... I'm not a guy for a pool. So I wouldn't put a pool in my backyard just to increase my home value. I would only put a pool in my backyard if I was going to use the pool. So, and the same goes with basements too. If you're going to use the basement, um, then yes, 100% money well spent. Typically when you sell the home, you will get the money back. And during that time, you've also had the enjoyment of the basement, whether you have family stay there, friends stay, or maybe you put a big home entertainment center down there and you watch the football games, you know, that's your spot. Then yes, by all means, well worth the money. Kevin, 498 rotisserie check, Sam, you are absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. I didn't think of that one. I was in Costco last weekend and I believe their chicken was still $4.99. That has not gone up in price. And at Costco, the hot dog and soda is still $1.50. So I forgot about that. I did forget about that. Yes. Frank, I think marijuana and illegal drugs have remained the same price. But I'm sure the government raised the price on legal sales. Good point, Frank. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely something that I um, have no clue what the price is. So, yeah. Yep. I think we've got inflation everywhere else, though. But um, people who are looking at the um, Utah, or if you're looking at purchasing a home anywhere in the United States. And I get asked this question all the time. Is, is now a good time to buy a home? Should I wait? Should I? I don't know if there is a perfect time to purchase a home. So um, interest rates were really low, but you know, home prices were up there and it was hard getting a home. It's still hard getting a home. I've seen the reverse. I've seen um, lower priced homes or, or homes that have cost less in the state of Utah, but I've seen mortgage rates at eight, nine, 10%. When I bought my first home in the nineties here in Utah, I think I was nine, not 9.25. Uh, on my first home. So yeah, the home prices were lower, but I was also paying a higher interest rate. So was that an ideal time to purchase a home? You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a tough question. The one fact that I do have, uh, and I own rentals. I, I, I love rentals, but let's say the average rental price for a single family home is $2,000 in Utah. And, and that's probably fairly accurate. Over a year, that's $24,000. Um, over four years, it's almost $100,000. Eight years, almost $200,000. That money, you would never get back. So that's it's, it's the power of owning real estate. And the fact that you own your own home. It's always a plus. Alex, a lot of big banks, economists are predicting a recession in the next year. Do you agree? I agree 100%. I think we are heading towards a recession. I think a, a couple things are going to happen or uh, a couple things that, I, that I'm noticing. There was, over the last couple of years, um, shortages. If you wanted to buy a camper trailer, a motorhome, a UTV, Many, many, many items, um, trailers to put your UTV in, 
thin supply, very thin supply. Everything was sold out. You had to order it. Wait, wait. You go by any of those locations in Utah at the moment. If you're buying a motorhome, a camper trailer. I remember going by a large motorhome dealership. The only thing they had left on the lot was the big, huge motorhomes, the big diesel pushers. That was it. Small camper trailers, fifth wheel trailers, all gone. You go to any of those places now, inventory is full. You buy any kind of trailer you want, uh, any kind of motorhome, camper trailer, they're all in stock. So I think what's going to happen is now that they're filling the dealer's lots, these companies have hired in probably record numbers, I'm assuming, to keep up with demand over the last couple of years. And I think there's going to be some job losses because they're... Their dealers will not be ordering as many items now that their lot is full. So I think, yes, possibly we're heading towards a recession. With all the mortgage rate increase across the country, is Utah still more affordable than most states in the country? Plan on transferring my job to Utah soon. I hope rates doesn't increase soon. Well, <clears throat> um. We are still more affordable than some other states, but we are by no means cheap. I mean, or uh, maybe that's not the right word, but um, yes, we, we um, prices here have increased. There, there, there's no doubt about it. And mostly it's due to supply and demand. We have very few homes on the market and we have high demand. Some of that demand is from people moving to the state of Utah. Basically, the cat's out of the bag. Um, people feel Utah is a great place to live. And that's just not for me doing videos or me saying I love the state of Utah. People are moving here in record numbers. Um, so that has, you know, demand and low supply, home prices go up. I think that um, we are seeing, so I can tell you about the market right now. We're, we're still in a hot market. We're still seeing multiple offers. Um, we're seeing very few price decreases. Some people have been priced out of the market. Some people have left the market. New. Some people have been sitting on the sidelines waiting to get into the market. And they're now jumping in as they see interest rates increase. We are seeing inventory increasing, and I was just looking that number up before I um, came online. As of right now, we are 3,889 homes on the U what we call the Utah MLS, and that's utahrealestate.com. That's our, quote, like official site. So, of course, that number through the weekend will drop. Um, a lot of homes get listed on Thursday and Friday for the weekends. So typically a last, on, I think on Monday, we're about 3,400 some homes. So we're up about 400 homes, but I do see a bump at the end of the week. And then come Monday or Tuesday, it goes down because we'll have two, three, 400 homes go under contract. So that 3,800 number probably on Monday will drop to about 3,500. But we are seeing overall increases. It was just a few months ago, we had 2,000 homes on the market. I saw under 2,000 homes in the market, but that is still low numbers. A normal market for the state of Utah is about seven to 9,000 homes. And I would almost say it's probably seven to 10,000 homes with the population increase. We, we need more homes for population increase. Uh, amount of people are here. So um, we do need more inventory or we need less demand. Either people stop moving to the state of Utah and that would change the market a little bit. I went off a little bit of a tangent there, but that's the current state of our market, how we are. Um, you know, the good news with that is, and I get asked this question a lot, you know, Mike, what would you do if your home if your home drops 50K? What would you do? Because they're trying to decide to purchase a home or whatever. And I honestly, I, I would lose no sleep about it. My home could drop a hundred thousand dollars. I would lose no sleep. It's all on paper because my mortgage payment will stay the same. The only time I worry about what the home price is, is if I plan on upgrading my house or, um, you know, selling the house and maybe move to another state. 
I don't see that happening. Then all of a sudden, I, I'm cur really curious about what the home prices are. But um, if it dropped, I have to live somewhere. I have to live somewhere. And I'm not a fan of going out there and or it, it, the home drops 50K. I'm not going to sell my home and feel, oh, I got to get out now because the ship is sinking. Because it's going to cost me, well, it would cost me more than $2,000. To, to live in a home like I live in right now, I'd have to pay $2,300 to $2,700. So I would have to pay that every month where if I continue paying my mortgage, my mortgage goes down. When I'm paying that $2,500 a month, it's going to no payment, no decrease in a loan. So I really don't sweat it. And that's the nice thing with real estate. It's an asset at where you are. I'm getting enjoyment out of it. I like the home. Uh, I really do not want to move. I really do not want to go into a rental. So if the value goes down some, I really don't sweat it. And the state of Utah, when you look at the future projections, and, and this is from, <clears throat> there's a lot of studies done by like University of Utah, a lot of people who specialize in migration growth. We are expected to double in population in the future. People have to live somewhere. So long term, home prices should be good if that continues, growth continues. So what makes me would make me nervous if we were a state that people are exiting in numbers? Um, so that's kind of like the general overview. Okay, Evan, I booked an Airbnb with Clawfoot Tub for this summer vacation. Wow, I haven't seen a claw foot tub very often. So <clears throat> those things are um, hard, hard to come by. People take old claw foot tubs and, and restore them. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the shortages have been hell. I love chicken wings, and I couldn't really get those for the longest time. I also just went to the store, and there was no honey mustard. Favorite condiment. Yep, yep, yep. Yes, that is that is correct, 100%. So, and I don't know what's going on right now in the state. That's something. You, when you talk about supply shortages... Something that, you know, and I don't know the facts on this, and I, I don't know what's happening in the state of California. Let's just say that. Friend of mine here, he's in the monster truck business, local guy. He just done a tour in Europe, and the trucks are coming back. I, I saw him last week, and I asked him, I said, you know, when's the trucks come back? Oh, mid-May. And I go, well, they were being shipped by sea containers. And I go, are they going to be? I mean, we're looking like six months before you get to unload them. He goes, no, they shipped them to the East Coast. They unload those ships right away. If I had them shipped to California, they would sit. So that's what he claims. We'll see. I'll go see him in May. Um, stop by in May and see if he got his trucks back from Europe. But it seems as if you ship something, I guess, to the East Coast and they'll unload the cargo containers. But in California, they're not being unloaded. So. I'm not sure what is going on in the state of California with that. So maybe the story he gave me with the East Coast isn't 100% correct. I'm not sure, but um, that's the story I was told. Anything else going on this evening? The state of um, or Salt Lake City was ranked the second best startup city. So if you are a company or want to start a company, I guess it's a great place. We are getting record numbers of companies moving here. So yes, number two, startup city, Salt Lake City. Any other questions this evening? It's been great. Some really great questions. We'll see how things go. Uh, that's, that's all we can do in the upcoming months. And go from there and see what happens in the world over the next coming months, too. So there's a lot of unknowns. A lot. 
All right, X. If real estate prices drop, yep, I I think for real estate prices to drop, we've got to change our supply and demand imbalance. So, um, you know, let's that that would be the only way I see real estate prices at the moment dropping. And there's a lot that can change with that, with the demand side, basically on the demand side. If interest rates continue climbing, there are more people that will be priced out of the market. Um, if we go into if we go into a recession, will we have as many people moving to the state of Utah? So demand will drop off in on that front also. So, um, yeah, that's uh, possibly possibly. Do you predict any particular area to drop? Well, Alex, I can only go by history. Let me, and I can tell you the facts or or or, or what went on in the past and 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 how things can relate. Back in 08, 07, 08, 09, when we had the mortgage fraud and everything, and the market crashed. In the, the state of Utah was two separate markets. Northern Utah had prices went down very little. My home went down about 10%. Southern Utah, St. George area got hammered, absolutely hammered. St. George, Las Vegas, Mesquite, Phoenix, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. And I'm not familiar with the East Coast market. Those areas got hammered. Home prices went down by a half or maybe more. The main reason was in tough times, so if we go in a recession, during tough times, people will give up their motorhomes, their toys, their razors, UTVs, that's a razor. They will give up their vacation homes, their second homes, before they give up their primary residence. And during that time period, those cities, St. George, Las Vegas, Phoenix, they are a very big area for people to have recreational homes, second homes, uh, winter homes. And they will, in tough times, give those away and keep their primary residence. In northern Utah, we do not have, we, we do have some, some homes here are vacation homes or second homes, especially in areas like Park City, um, anywhere around like the ski resorts. So those areas could possibly be hit. People might give up some of those properties. But in general, in northern Utah, most of the homes are kind of like a primary residence. So if we repeat, if we go into a recession and we repeat what happened back in 08, 09, I would imagine that those same cities might be hit a little harder than everywhere else, purely because there are those vacation homes and people, they give up the motor homes. They give up the, the boats <laughs> when times are tough, but they'll keep their primary residence as long as they can. So if you want a good deal on a motor home or a boat or something like that. If we go into a recession, that'll be the time to buy. People will be offloading those items. So, um, but, you know, back to if, uh, if a particular area would drop, if we went to recession, I would say possibly Southern Utah. Do you own a beehive? I do not. Kind of funny how Rudy Gobert has one and was stung last week. I didn't know that Rudy had a beehive. Well, there's talk in the state of Utah that um, Rudy Gobert's told the Jazz that either he stays with a team or Donovan Mitchell stays with a team. One of them has to go. I don't know how true that story is. But maybe Rudy Gobert will not leave because he's got his beehive collection. Just my guess. Just my guess. So, and I would personally, I would not like to see either player leave. They remind me of the Stockton to Malone era, John Stockton, Car Malone. So, I would like both of them. 
What food can you grow in Utah in the backyard? Oh, I know a little bit about that. My, so my wife's uh, a farmer's daughter. So we have a garden in our backyard. You can grow a lot. Um, what we have grown, or let me just say what we've grown and, and have had success with. And I'm probably going to miss some of these. Strawberries, potatoes, corn, tomatoes, peppers, variety of peppers, jalapeno peppers, green peppers, whatever you like. Um, onions. Our onion, last year, our onions grew. I had, I had onions that were like this big. Um, zucchini, squash, beets. I love my beets. Um, our beets literally are like this big, can, can grow to th this big, large, large size. Corn grows very well, especially along the fence. If we plant the corn along the fence, and the only theory I can, it'll grow taller than the fence. My, my fence is, I think, six foot tall. Um, I think because the sun hits it and radiates off of that there, corn against the fence line will, will grow very, very nice. You can grow much more than that. That's what we've grown personally and have had success. My wife has had success growing um, all those items, all the above items. Strawberries, I mean, they just flourish. It's just when they start popping, it. I have to run out and eat them before they go bad. So it's like every morning I'll make like a strawberry drink. So great, great, great. Tomatoes, I mean, tomatoes are the big one. A lot of backyards in Utah, you will find tomatoes, uh, all varieties. We grow all varieties, Roma tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, um, early birds, a whole variety. But uh, squash, zucchini, onions, peppers, you name it. So pre pretty much potatoes. So now with the potatoes, the way we've done it, um, so we actually get the seed potatoes, uh, from Idaho and then you, uh, cut it and put it in the yard. So, um, but that's, yeah, general, it, things grow very well, very, very well. Now it will also depend though on the soil. And I have to ask the wife about that. So when we did our garden, her dad, being a farmer, gave me a list of what to put in the soil. And we bought bags of this and bags of that. And we rototilled it all in to give us some great soil. So, Alex, love the show. You always provide great local insight. You're welcome. I love doing it. I love doing this. I love the state of Utah. I think it's a great place to live. Uh, I never say it's the greatest place on earth or our, our license plates um, used to say there's one of the taglines. Um, no, it used to say greatest snow on earth. But I'm not one else say it because I don't believe there is one place that suits everybody's needs. So, um, yeah, there are people who move here and do leave. No doubt. No doubt. Just like every everywhere else. So advantages, disadvantages. What I will say is we are a family-oriented state. Family is very big in the state of Utah. And we are an outdoor, recreational, destination, capital. Whatever your outdoor hobby is, you probably can find it in the state of Utah. So if that's your lifestyle, then the state of Utah is a great place. If you are, let me compare this to, say, Southern California. If you're a sports fan. We cannot compete with with Southern California. I mean, you've got NFL teams, NHL teams, Major League Baseball, basketball, everything is in. So, no, state of Utah, we 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 were that's not our destination. So, or not our uh, claim to fame. But um, outdoor recreation, family oriented state, family is very important in the state of Utah, and um, we're a you know well below the national average when it comes to crime. So I, 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 feel, I personally feel we're a safe state where, so, you know, we do have crime. So don't, I don't want to say we have no crime, but um, nowhere near the crime that is reported in some other states that, that I could, that I could mention, but I won't. Okay. 
Any more questions this evening before I call it an evening? It's been great. I appreciate all the questions. And um, I will see everybody next week. I hope to be on next week. And I hope everybody has a great weekend. Take care.